everybody! Welcome to How To Videos with Dr. Amy Gates. This video is going to focus on making sure that you have SPSS properly installed on your computer and then where to find the SPSS data files for both the discussion areas and the project and how to open up those files and look at them in SPSS, how to learn what the different variables mean, and then how to do a couple of quick things like make a graph or look at summary statistics like mean, median, or mode. All right, let's get started. First, we want to make sure that you have properly installed SPSS on your computer. Here in our class, in the announcements area, there's already how-to videos on finding, getting, and using SPSS, as well as other course materials. If I scroll up a little bit and open up this announcement, you can see that there's a how-to video already here for you that shows you how to get your textbook as well as SPSS. Just in case our class has already started and you still don't have SPSS installed on your computer, you definitely want to stop watching this video and make sure that you do that right away. You'll use this particular how-to video and what you're actually going to do here is you're going to use the SPSS and software requirements link underneath the course home and let me click on course so that we can have the view that you get because this is the author view. Once you click on SPSS and software requirements it'll take you to an area where you have the option of clicking on a link called on the hub. If you click on the hub it will open up another window for you and right here at the top is where you would click to download SPSS. If I click this, we can see that this is the first choice you want to make. You can ignore these. This is the one you want. Click on IBM SPSS Statistics 20. And then from here, you'll decide, do I have a Windows computer or a Mac computer? But either way, you want to scroll down until you find the option that's called IBM SPSS Statistics Standard Grad Pack 20 for either Windows or Mac, six-month rental. This is the cost, and you'll have to use either a credit card or PayPal to get it, but you can download this immediately onto your computer. So if for some reason you haven't gotten SPSS with your textbook or you didn't order the CD or the CD did not come in properly or your book is running late, or you don't have a CD-ROM, or the CD isn't working, whatever, whatever the situation is, whatever's going on, this option will save you. And this option will allow you to continue moving forward in the class and will give you SPSS right away. Now once you have SPSS installed on your computer, you should be able to find it by going down to your Start button, clicking that start button and in my case I actually placed my SPSS right here on my initial tab. However, if you can't remember where you put it or you're not sure where your computer installed it, you can do a search for SPSS and your computer will find it for you. And these are the little icons that you want to look for here. Let me see if I can get them to scroll down. You could probably see this one. But anything that looks like SPSS actually has that little round ball thing with the sigma symbol and the alpha and the division sign. So that's what you want to look for in your computer. Now your next step is just to click this link once you find it to open up SPSS. So let's do that. When your computer opens up SPSS, it actually will take a couple of seconds and it'll start by putting this box open and then it'll give you this little options and it'll say do you want to run a tutorial do you want to type in your own data or do you want to use a data set that you already have for much of our class we're going to use data sets that already exist however you may also want the option of typing in your own data there's a separate how-to video that I've created that shows you how to type in your own data into SPSS and then build graphs and run analysis on that data. So that's in a separate how-to video that's in the announcements area. For our purposes, I want to make sure that you can find and open up the data sets that are in our classroom. So let's take that next step and then we'll start over. So I'll cancel this and close this, go back to our classroom, and from our classroom area, Assuming that you already have SPSS installed on your computer, your next step is to go to the doc sharing area. When you click on doc sharing, there are several different data sets that you can choose from. 
If you're in the first category, which is the one that comes up automatically, you can scroll down and you'll see that there's a zip file here that contains all of the SPSS data files for all the discussion board assignments for our class. This is definitely something you want to click and you want to open and download. If this box does not pop up for you and your computer gives you an error, that means that your computer does not have the ability to download zip files. In that case, you have to contact tech support right away because unfortunately this is not something I can help you with. It's free to get it on your computer. You can even do a Google search on your own and try to just download the ability to do that. But for some students, it's easier to just contact tech support and allow them to walk you through the process. For most of us, our computers already have this on it and will immediately allow you to open or save this zip file. I'm going to go ahead and open it. So I'm going to click OK. When I do that, it opens up in a temp directory and it opens a folder because this was all zipped up. And when I double click this folder, I can actually see all the different SPSS files that were inside of that zip file. If I double click any one of these, it's going to open automatically in SPSS. So let's try that. And another thing that you want to remember to do is once you have these, remember they're in a temp folder right now, so you won't be able to find them easily. What you want to do is copy them out of here and paste them to a location in your computer where you can find them easily. Wherever it is that you place them, you can double click any of these files. And I'll do that now, so I'll double click bears. And it will automatically open up right in SPSS. So it gives you the age of the bear, how many months old the bear is, the sex of the bear, whether it's male or female, the length of the head, the width of the head, and so on. So this is an example of what it will look like when you open up an SPSS file on your computer. If you're unable to double click an SPSS file, that might mean that you don't have SPSS installed properly. Again, in that case, you may want to contact tech support. There are phone numbers for this in the announcements area. But remember, you can't have SPSS on your computer until you either install it from the CD, if you ordered the CD from the bookstore, or until you download it from the internet using the on the hub option that we looked at. So before you can have SPSS on your computer, you've got to get it on there in some, in some way. If you need to review how to do that again, don't forget that we have a how-to video on how to get SPSS onto your computer right here in our classroom area. So there's our how-to video for finding, getting, and using SPSS. Now the next thing I want to look at by clicking on Doc Sharing again is the second category called Graded Projects. If I click Graded Projects, I can scroll down and here's another SPSS file. It's all by itself. It's not zipped up. So even if you can't unzip those files initially, you can still test your SPSS by using this file. You simply click and download this file, save it onto your computer, and then SPSS will open this file directly. Let's try that. So I'll click it, and it immediately gives me the option to open it. Because I have SPSS on my computer, and your version's going to be version 20 now, because mine's an older version, but don't worry about that, my computer automatically says, do you want to open it with SPSS, because it recognizes it as an SPSS file. Your computer should do the same thing, but in case it doesn't, you can always open it the third way that I'm going to show you. But assuming you get this option, you click OK. And again, your computer will go through the process of opening up SPSS and then opening the exact file that you just asked it to, which was stat underscore grades. This is the specific SPSS file that you're going to use for all four of the projects in our course. So this is a really important file that you want to download and review and make sure you're familiar with. Now finally, let's say you download some files, but they don't automatically open in SPSS. What's another option? Another option is you can go ahead and just open SPSS directly. 
Let's wait for my computer to open it up again. And then again, from SPSS, it actually says, here's some files that you can open. This is another way to open up files. So here's that stat underscore grades. But let's say that it doesn't even give you this option. Let's cancel this away. Worst case, let's say you're just right here looking at a blank SPSS screen. But you want to open a file that you know you have on your computer. To do that, you click on File and then Open. And it's going to ask you, what kind of file do you want to open? You want to open a data file. And so it'll search your computer and try to find data files. But you have to remember where you put them. I stuck a few of my data files that I created in my Documents folder. And so it, it's looking in there first, and it's able to find some. So I could open my cholesterol if I want to write in SPSS. There's my cholesterol data. So if you have a file, you have to make sure you know where it is. So when you try to open it, you can tell SPSS where to look. So lots of different options for opening files. And your first goal in this course is to make sure that you have SPSS installed on your computer, that you can find and download all the data files, the one for the project, as well as the zip file for all the discussion areas. Make sure you can open these in SPSS. And then finally, check out the other how-to videos on how to make graphs and how to do summary statistics. Anytime you have a question in our class, your best bet is to come to the course home link and check out the how-to videos. There'll be many, many how-to videos when you get started in the classroom, and they'll each tell you what they're going to cover. Thanks for joining me again, and I'll see you in class.